Howdy everyone and welcome back to The More You Grow. I've been getting a lot of requests from you guys in the comments to do videos on how to grow container plants and how to grow successful container plants. I was going to do just a video that talked about all the steps, but I thought wouldn't it be fun if we could do a series where I could go over each of the variables that I think are very important in container plants and just make a video on each one of those where I can go into a little bit more detail and talk about it a little bit more. So I decided I'm gonna make a series called Container Plant Success. And we're gonna have different episodes going over water, containers, all that stuff. So if you're into container plants, if you have anything like house plants, outdoor plants, anything in a container, this can pertain to you. So I think you're gonna enjoy this. We're gonna go with our first episode today and it's gonna be Container Plant Success, Episode 1, Containers, because they gotta start somewhere. So let's go check it out. So before I begin, I should just say a lot of what I'm gonna talk about is gonna depend on what kinds of plants you're trying to grow. So you should always do your research on your plan of interest, on its requirements, and that's gonna help you make a decision on a lot of the things I'm gonna talk about in this video and future videos. And speaking of future videos, I'll probably just do a whole video on finding out what different plants require and how you can find that at home. But in this video, we're just gonna talk about containers because before you can plant anything, you gotta have something to plant it in. Whether this is the first time you've ever grown a plant in a container or a plant at all, or if you're a hardcore plant lover like me and you've been growing plants for years, it all has to begin the same way. You have to choose your container for the plant that you're gonna grow. And the first thing you gotta think about is what kind of container are you gonna use? There's a lot of different containers out there. If you go into a garden store, you're gonna see containers of all shapes, sizes, colors, and materials. And you're gonna be maybe thinking, I don't know which one to choose, and it may be a daunting task to choose a pot. Or you may be worried about choosing the wrong pot or a pot that's not gonna work well. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is container materials. And you're gonna see a lot of different kinds of materials out there if you look hard enough. I'm gonna start with the first one that I think really predated most of the pots that we see. It's gonna be terracotta. Terracotta pots are really good for certain things and they can have drawbacks for different reasons. One of the things that terracotta pots do really well is they wick water away from the soil. They are a porous material, so that means the air and water can exchange through the pot. And so if you have a plant that needs a lot of drainage and needs pretty dry soils, terracotta is a great option for things like cactus, things like that, because it's going to pull that water away and evaporate it through the pot. And that can be a downside in some ways as well. If you've got a plant that needs a lot of water and a lot of moisture, it's gonna be pulling a lot of that water away and you're gonna to have to water it more often than you would other kinds of containers. So you just gotta think about that when you pick a terracotta pot. Does this plant need a lot of water? If so, I would probably choose something different. The next material we're gonna talk about is probably what most of you are gonna see the most often. It's gonna be plastic pots. Plastic pots are really great because they're inexpensive, they're easy to find, and they come in every shape, size, color that you could probably ever think of. So they're very versatile, very cheap, very easy to find. And there's a lot of benefits to a plastic pots, and there are some downsides. Plastic pots are different than terracotta pots because they are not porous air and water cannot flow between the outside of the pot and the inside of the pot. So that can be a good thing as far as holding more moisture. It's going to make it where you don't have to water as much if you have plants that like a lot of water. But on the other side of that is it can retain a lot more water than a terracotta pot. So if you don't have a well draining soil or a container that drains well, you could run the risk of having diseases show up in your roots. You could have root rot. You just gotta be careful of that. And we're gonna address water and soil in the next couple of episodes, so stay tuned for those. But for now, I'm gonna probably talk the most about plastic pots because this is my go-to. They're ones I use the most, and it's probably what you're gonna see most often in the stores and what you're gonna be able to buy. There are a few other kinds of containers out there. They're just gonna be a lot less common. You have your concrete planters, and those are gonna be good for things such as annual plants because the planter is so heavy and so big you're not going to be able to move it in and out so it's good to have something there that will only be temporary it's going to die at the end of the year anyways 
so you don't really have to worry about moving that pot. Other uh, things you can think about are grow bags. Those can work well, but they're gonna be like the terracotta pots to where they're going to be porous and they're going to evaporate through the bag. Those are really good to use in aquatic plantings. If you're gonna have a fish pond or a koi pond, I love to use those bags to plant aquatic plants in because it's gonna allow the water to exchange through the bag and it's gonna work really well for something like that. They will work on land, you're just gonna to have to water them a lot more than you would something like a plastic pot. But enough about the kinds of materials, let's talk about how container shape can play a huge role in the success of your container plants. Most people don't think about this, but I'm about to show you something really cool. The next thing we're gonna talk about is container shape. And you may be thinking, what in the world does the shape have to do with picking out my pot? Can I just pick out the container that's gonna look prettiest based on its shape? Well, there's actually a big factor that the shape plays on the success of your plants, depending on what you're trying to grow. If you look behind me, I have all different kinds of containers back here. We have some that are small here. We have some that are round and kind of shallow. We have some that are round and tall. And then we even have bigger and taller plants in the back. And so this shape is going to play a big role on drainage in the pot. And you may be thinking you can add something like rocks to the bottom for better drainage, but let me stop you there. It's actually found out that adding rocks to the bottom of your pot actually decreases your drainage because it is decreasing the amount of capillary action that's happening in your soil. And I'll show you with a little demonstration. I learned this here and I thought it was really cool. So pretend that this sponge is a shallow pot, kind of what you would see succulents in and stuff. It's a shallow pot. You don't see much drainage there. It's dripping a little bit. But now let's go up to something like this, or even like this, something like that. Imagine that when I turn this sponge, it is that kind of container. Look at the drainage we get out of that. Even more drainage comes out of the sponge when I turn it on its side. And that's gonna be representing a taller container. And if I take this sponge and I turn it again, even more water starts coming out. And that's because we have gravity acting on the sponge just like it will act in the soil with your plants. So by having a taller container, you're gonna get a lot more drainage than you would if you had a flat container. And so when you're looking at what you're trying to plant, if your plant is requiring a lot of drainage, you may want to consider getting a taller pot rather than a shallow flat pot, kind of like this. I kind of imagine the shallow pots looking wide and flat and short instead of tall and narrow. So the taller your container is, the more drainage you get. So keep that in mind when you're picking your container and what your plants require. So while I've got these guys behind me, now is a good time to talk about container size and why we choose the right container size for the plants we're trying to grow. It comes down to a lot of different things, but you may be thinking to yourself, why don't I just plant seeds in something like this? It would give them a lot more room to grow and I wouldn't have to transplant as much. Well, you may be right, but there may be some problems with that as well. If you think about planting a seed in this, what is it gonna need? It's gonna need a lot of soil to fill up this pot and it's going to hold a lot more water. So if you plant the seed in here and if it doesn't grow, then you've used up a lot of soil and your plant didn't grow anyways. So it's just a lot of soil you didn't even need. And the same with that is it's going to hold a lot more water in this container than something like this will. And as a seed grows, it doesn't use a lot of water right off the bat. It needs moisture, yes, but if you have too much water, you could run into problems such as root rot, diseases, and that's just gonna end up messing with your germination rate, and you're gonna end up with a lot less successful seedlings. But on the other hand, I planted seeds for our dragon fruit in a different container, and they're all growing in a container about like this. I'll show you real quick. I planted a lot of seeds in, in one small pot because those seeds 
didn't need a lot of space right off the bat, but now they need a lot more space. We need to transplant these guys out. I need to transplant them a long time ago. And we can move them into their own containers. The reason why we want to transplant is because we want to give those roots enough space to grow and to expand and be healthy and where they're not competing against each other. So something like this is ready to transplant again because it grows fast. This guy has filled up this pot with its roots and it's ready for a new home. They're kind of like hermit crabs. Hermit crabs change shells as they get bigger because they won't fit into a smaller shell as they grow. So one thing you want to look at when you're transplanting or when to transplant is you want to see if the roots are reaching the bottom and you want to avoid what they call root bound or root binding. So what root bound means is if this plant grows long enough in this pot, the roots are going to bunch up in the bottom. They're going to twist around each other, potentially choke each other. So you want to be sure to take your plants out of the container every so often and check them and see where the roots are. And maybe even look at the bottom kind of in the holes. If you see roots at the bottom of your pot in your drainage holes, it's time for a new pot. So just keep an eye on that and keep that in mind that you will have to move your plants up into bigger containers. But where does it stop? How big of a container does your plant need? Well, it depends on the plant. I have a little tree here. I'm not gonna say what it is just yet because I wanna do a video all about it. And it's going to get quite large. It will not get as large as, such, as something like an oak tree will, but it's gonna get a lot bigger than this. So the bigger container I give it, the bigger it's going to get and the more it's going to expand and the healthier it's going to be. And in some cases, your plants, if they're fruiting plants or flowering plants, they don't have enough resources or don't have enough space, they won't flower or fruit. So it depends on the plant, but you just want to make sure to keep moving the plants up into big enough containers to where they can be successful. And you got to think about things such as do you have to move this pot in and out for winter? If you choose a gigantic container, can you move that if you have to? So just keep that in mind as you think about container sizes. Well, there you have it, guys. That's just the first episode in understanding how to grow better container plants. We're gonna be talking about all kinds of stuff such as water, light, soil. I'm gonna to try to set you up for success, guys, where you're growing some awesome, healthy, happy container plants. So if you like this video and you think this series is a good idea, hit that like button. If you have any more questions for me about anything in this video or have any questions for upcoming videos or suggestions, leave them down in the comments, but we got a lot coming up. If you haven't done so yet, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Go check us out on Facebook and Instagram. And until next time, I hope you'll join me right here on The More You Grow.